CBS Sports presents NCAA Basketball. Today's national semifinal game between the Louisville Cardinals and the Georgetown Hoyas. Live from the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana, is sponsored by Chevrolet. Chevy makes good things happen. Converse Athletic Shoes. And by Lowenbrow. When it's time for the taste of a truly great beer, let it be Lowenbrow. Louisville and Georgetown have been introduced, and let's go down now to Gary Bender and Billy Packer. All right, Brent, thank you. Louisville making their second appearance in three years in the Final Four. Denny Crum, who won it all in 1980. Louisville with a 23-9 and nine record. They've won 11 of their last nine, and Jerry Eves is one of the reasons. One of the most unsung guards in the United States. Great leadership qualities. He'll be important in this ballgame. Derek Smith, the number two scorer in the history of Louisville basketball. He's a guy that can do it all. There you see the great hands. Power inside plays well within him himself one of the best forwards in America. Now Georgetown, they've won nine in a row. And Eric Sleepy Floyd is a consensus All-American. Great outside perimeter shooter, very much underrated defensive player, certainly one of the nation's best guards. A high school player of the year last year, and what a job he's done in his first year, Pat Ewing. Well, Pat Ewing over the last month has really made his presence known in college basketball, maybe the biggest factor in the game right now. Georgetown was in the Final Four in 1943. They lost to Wyoming in the championship game. Denny Crum in 1980, they won it all. They were fourth in 72. They finished third in 75. And this year, after being eliminated last year on an unbelievable shot by Arkansas, they have stormed to win 11 of the last 12. And John Thompson, the coach of Georgetown, he is taking his team to its fourth straight NCAA tourney appearance. And this guy at six foot ten, around 300 pounds, has done a remarkable job. Louisville, there's the way they got here. Alabama, Birmingham. They had to go into Birmingham and win that game on the Blazers' home floor. The margin of victory, Billy, in these three games was 16.7. They just stormed through the West. They were devastating, and you have to take in consideration the long travel problems that they had going out there. This is going to be a war, Gary. A war it may be. And the winner to tangle with North Carolina for the championship Monday night. And Ewing controls the opening tip to Sleepy Floyd. This ball club shot 63% from the field out west. I'm amazed already. It's McCray on Ewing. And Floyd misses. And they haven't missed very many shots in this NCAA tournament. They hit 13 straight against Oregon State. Missed only two the entire second half. Remember now, four of these players for Louisville played on that 80 championship team. They'd like to get to that championship final again. Straight man to man now. Riley Brown is one of those. Lancaster Gordon, just a sophomore. Out of Jackson, Mississippi. Difficult shot. Ewing is there and he clears a rebound. Throws it away. Little bit excited. John Thompson going to calm him down a little bit. And there is some of the wave of red. Our officials, Joe Forty, the ACC, Tom Rucker, the Big Ten, and Bob Wortman of the Mid-America Conference. They had that great game we worked last Sunday in terms of an outstanding officiating job. And people have to remember, officials win their way here. They're not selected. They have to do it on performance. Look at Ewing stay with Wiley Brown. Wiley brings it out to Rodney McRae, who's a starting center as a freshman. The year they won it all. Wiley Brown, he was intimidated. It might have been partially blocked. Here comes Fred Brown last year, the Big East Rookie of the Year, and we're going to have an out-of-bounds play. They stepped out. Louisville, after two turnovers, will have it. Georgetown wanting to get running. John Thompson just working his kids. Denny Crum doing the same thing down to the other end, trying to get some semblance of order. Both of these teams have great physical presence on the court, and I think right now the first team that can get themselves organized and calm down has a chance to pull away with a nice lead. What a calming influence John Thompson has been. Derek Smith reaching in and on him as Fred Brown. Brown, an outstanding defensive player, as this, this entire Georgetown team this year. They played remarkably well, holding teams under 40% field goal-wise on 20 different games. I think we'll see Wally Brown get out of there early because he's not an offensive threat against uh, Pat Ewing. We might see Charles Jones replacing him, who's played so well. Hancock with a rebound. Still no scoring in this game. Lob! Ewing too high! He almost took the backboard down. 
Gary's on the move. He was the guard along with Daryl Griffith the year they won it all. That'll be off of Derek Smith. Both teams a little shaky, Billy, in the early going. You notice the presence of Pat Ewing on the court already has been a distracting force in a number of shots, has blocked one, and he can move on that break. Already four turnovers, three of them going against Georgetown. Brown off to Eric Smith, a good swing man. He can play the guard of the forward position, a third-team All-Big East selection. Here is Floyd, the all-time leading scorer. Brown, who's led the team in assists this year, a super passer into Ewing and a foul. Ewing is fouled. Wiley Brown came to his kneecaps when he made that foul. Nice piece of officiating again because you've got to give a man a chance to come down and occupy that space where he went up. You see the... He's matured so much, and there's Wiley Brown not giving Pat Ewing any opportunity to land. you got to give John Thompson credit for that. He's made him control his elbows, play under control. Sleepy Floyd, that's missing badly. Air ball. That's not the Sleepy Floyd you expect to see. Any crumb with the kidney stone and all. He has been in great pain, but his team wins. That's got to ease that pain a little bit. There's that full court pressure. Both teams showing it. They break it beautifully. Whoa. Ewing, and the basket will count a foul on Ewing. Derek Smith with a chance for a three-point play, and Ewing is shaken up. He's down. Derek Smith showing excellent hands right here, watching the ball right on in as opposed to losing concentration with Ewing coming. I don't know what happened to Ewing, other than he might have been a winded a little bit. Well, I don't either. He didn't look like he hit the deck that hard. There he is. Looks like he's a little bit of pain. Covering the entire lane. Oh, the paint was covered. So Derek Smith, second only to Daryl Griffith, is the all-time scorer at Louisville. He passed Wes Unseld and Charlie Tyra this year. A great basketball tradition. 30 straight winning seasons at Louisville. That's an NCAA record. 2-0. The Cardinals are the lead. 17.40 to go. First half. Georgetown with three turnovers. All for two from the field. It is Wiley Brown back on Ewing now, which is the matchup we expected. There yeah, breaks the scoring ice. Eric Smith makes it 2-2. Smith averaging almost nine and a half points a game. There they go against the pressure. This quickness, jumping ability of Louisville. That'll be off of Georgetown. Are they quick? Again, Ewing's presence felt because normally Lancaster Gordon would have taken that right to the hoop for the score. Fourth trip to the Final Four. 1980, they won it. They defeated UCLA in the finals. The Larry Brown coach team. Benny Crump said he thought this team potentially was as good as that championship team, but it would have to be better to win it this year. Now Georgetown in the zone with Ewing taking up a lot of space in the middle. Out it comes to Gordon. Gordon had 23 points and a win in that Mid-East region. Was the MVP in that game. Here's Rodney McCray who's partially blocked. Hand caught for the rebound. Off to Eric Smith. Sleepy Floyd will bring it back out. Brown to Hancock. Here's Floyd. Boy, does he move off the ball well. Really creating some defensive problems. Smith inside. He is going to walk with the ball. Give a lot of credit to Rodney McRae. He held his ground. We're seeing some excellent collegiate defense being played right now. That's already four turnovers against Georgetown. 16-34, and that will be off of Georgetown. They'll inbounds it again. There's that full court pressure by Georgetown. Both teams play very similar on a defensive basis. They can go play you man to man, but they like to put pressure full court with the zone. It's interesting you say that because I asked John Thompson what would be the difference. He says we are so similar, it's got to be concentration. Right now, both teams are a little shaky in the early going, but part of that due to the defensive effort. 2-2 two, two our score. We've almost played four minutes in this game. Jerry Eves. Rebound, Floyd. Look at Ewing get down the floor. He walks with the ball. And there's the young Colt, the stallion. And here, here's John Thompson going crazy out there saying, Patrick, what are you trying to do out there? He is really hot. Now, Patrick Ewing can really run on the break, but he has no business trying to make this play. No question about the call. He forgot where the goal was. I think he took off about 25 feet from the basket. Georgetown struggling. One of three from the field. Five turnovers already in the game. Wiley Brown, Lancaster Gordon. Ewing is back. Did you see how he made him change that shot? Wiley Brown follows. Good effort by Wiley, the senior from Sylvester, Georgia. But Ewing came out like a goalie in hockey and made him take that angle differently at the basket. Fred Brown, Hancock. Nice 
Uh, he's a streak shooter. He's a man who's been a three-year starter, only played two years in high school. That's fun to go off of Louisville. Gary Eves has to be thinking a little better than that. Wiley Brown's not the kind of guy who can make that catch. Here comes 26-year-old Ed Spriggs, a co-captain, a guy that John Thompson discovered in a post office league. He was a starter last year, started the first game this year until Ewing took over. 4-4 our score. Low scoring, very fast-paced action game here. The winner to play North Carolina Monday night. Louisville, as we pointed out many times, presses full court zone and then drops back man to man, and that is so tough to do. Boy, I tell you, Eves is really playing tough on Brown. Ewing, top shot, and John Thompson. I think he's wondering what this young guy's trying to do out here. I think that was one of those. No, no, no. Oh, good shot. Ewing makes it 6-4. The Hoyas, that's off Wiley Brown. They're just a little out of control. Well, Benny Crum has to be upset there because Wiley's not the guy, as I pointed out in the past, the last pass, you don't throw him that kind of a ball. And Rodney McCray can catch the ball extremely well. Timeout, 14-58 first half. Get a turnover for Louisville. You see Milt Wagner in the game. He has gloves on. He lost most of the skin off his hands due to a virus. He's number 20, the freshman from Camden, New Jersey, in the game. Into Ewing. Kicked up by Spriggs. I think that was a shot. Well, Ewing's, Ewing was uh, shooting the ball right there, and it's exactly what Denny Crum wants to see him put the ball up, but he got no block out from any of his other men. Spriggs at 6-9, giving Georgetown an 8-4 lead and a reach-in foul against Georgetown. That's going to go against Eric Smith. Now, Gene Smith is in the ball game, and John Thompson has called him over, and he got his attention to hurry. They're going to give that on Floyd instead, his first personal foul. You don't think John is in control, and so is this man, a very personable coach, Denny Crown. You know, when I see John Thompson with his towel, and I see uh, Guy Lewis having his, it, it, you start to wonder a little bit. You know, you say maybe these guys uh, went to bed with a Celtic. You know, I mean, maybe we got to get one. Maybe we could do a broadcast. Here's Rodney McRae. Look at the jumping ability. Derek Smith. Ewing goaltending. <laughs> he just with one big paw swiped that one out of the air. Early in the ball game might not be a bad thing to do. Just to keep him thinking about your presence inside. Look at Derek Smith. That's a great shot, isn't it? That really shows how high above the cylinder he was. 8-6, Georgetown. 14-10, left to go, first half. Again, the pressure. Louisville with a great depth that they have. They may have as fine a depth as anybody in college basketball. Smith off to Ewing. Back to Smith. Smith, great confidence. But this time, Ewing to follow. <laughs> Tries to follow his own miss shot. McCray brings it out to Smith. Derek Smith handles the ball well. Six foot seven, a senior. He falls down. Smith was just beaten up in that UAB game. Had a dislocated jaw. He had stitches in the game before, but he's in here again. And Smith. Gene Smith this time has committed the foul. John Thompson very angry again, saying he wants solid Ballas defense. He does not want you to commit the foul. Person asked uh, last night, I heard Bobby Knight ask the question, how come North Carolina, they don't ever get in foul trouble? If you play hard defense, aren't you supposed to get in foul trouble? And he said, no, the object is to play good defense without getting in foul trouble, which I thought was an interesting point. You see changes. Fred Brown coming in. Mike Hancock comes in. Pat Ewing sits down. Ewing coming out at the 13-35 mark. So Spriggs will move into the pivot spot. You see him in the middle of that zone. Look for Louisville to try to get it inside against him. How oh, about that? Wagner with gloves and all hit that shot. That's got to be tough to do, Billy. He may never take him off if he keeps hitting him that way. They were thinking he was going to go without him today, even though he practiced in him yesterday. Broken up. Good defensive effort. The quickness that's off of Georgetown. You see who's in the ball game now? Charles Jones. Ewing goes out. Jones comes in. Denny Crum might have said he didn't want Jones to go in there and be intimidated early. Now he'll work him a little bit offensively. Jones, the last time they played against UAB, had 19 points. 13 of them coming from the free throw line. He is number 33 in the picture now for Louisville. 13 minutes to go, first half. Wagner off to Rodney McCray at 6'7. He was the center on that title championship team in 80. You know, it'd be interesting to try to shoot with those golf gloves on now. You got to thinking about it now, haven't you? Yeah, I, you would think it would be very difficult. The field just wouldn't be there. Well, wide receivers use them in football. Hancock from the corner. Spriggs mistimed his jump, but he still got it. Sensational play by Spriggs. He was coming down and still had enough strength 
helped them make that one go in. 10-8 Georgetown. Oh, God. Lancaster Gordon avoided that. Oh, did Eric Smith, or Gene Smith, rather, hit the deck in front of us. He's up and running. Charles Jones. Fast and furious right now. Here is Brown. Georgetown keeping the pressure on with their full court play. And caught to try another one. He's missed two from there. Leitner comes down with the rebound. Off to Gordon. 12 minutes to go first half. 10-8 Georgetown. Now Ewing getting up to come back in the ball game. Not a good pass. I think Louisville tired right now. Eric Smith couldn't come up with that. Sleepy Floyd blocked by Rodney McRae. What a play by McRae. Back to the other end, Derek Smith. And we're going to have a foul. It'll be a foul on Spriggs. Spriggs, yeah. Spriggs making the body contact. And right now, you get the feeling the tempo is just a little out of control. It really is, and I think both teams got exhausted in this sequence, a little bit of ragged play. There's the difference between Spriggs, who has given a solid job to Georgetown, and a Ewing, who would have batted that one away. Derek Smith to the line. You were talking about tired. Derek Smith just bent over, catching his breath. The tempo has been torrid thus far. Not a very high-scoring game for as fast as the tempo is. Good. I think what happens in every sport, the adrenaline gets growing so quick that players get mentally exhausted, and they have to go sit down for a second or two to get themselves back on even feel. I guess you can hyperventilate a little bit. Smith makes it a 10-9 game. He can tie it up. 67% free throw shooter. But this team has been shooting so much better from the free throw line during tournament play. They've been shooting 70.5. They struggled all year long in the Metro Conference. Here's the full court pressure now by Louisville. Watch him. Full court zone and then go back and pick up man to man. Six points for Smith. It's all even again. Ten up. Anthony Jones has checked in. The freshman player of the year in the Washington, D.C. area last year. Brown, tough shot. Good defense that time by Scooter McRae who's checked in. A lot of substitutions. He's back in. Jones has come in. We have Scooter McRae in. As you mentioned, they're trying to rest some of these people up after that initial emotional and physical burst that we've had. Here's Jones. Coming on strong after that deep thigh bruise, which is still a wrap. Oh, he tries Brown. to take it in. Block. The scramble, and we're going to have It's going to go off of Louisville. I think it's going to be off Derek Smith saying he was out of bounds in contact with the out of bounds line when he also was in contact with the ball. Now watch the inside passing. Okay. Here comes Jones. He gets the ball stripped on a beautiful block by Brown. And Derek Smith got his hand on the ball. Dove for it, and I believe he's in contact with the out of bounds line when he touched the ball. That's what happened, Billy. George Tattle inbounds. A lot of air balls in this game, Billy, which I think is again an indication of how demanding this game has been physically. Well, and the defensive quickness by both teams, great leaping ability. Every shot you take is challenged. Now coming in is Poncho Wright for Louisville. He's playing with a jam toe that's been bothering him. He heard it Monday night in practice. But Poncho's a good outside shooter. Here's Anthony Jones. You talk about a good shooter. Jones is something. Just a freshman. There he is. He'll pop one if he gets any opportunity at all at 6'6". Now it's Scooter McRae playing on Pat Ewing inside. There's Ewing posting up. He makes the power move. Gary Eves, and a foul will go on Eric Smith. One of the things I felt, Gary, in terms of watching Georgetown play, and I'm not surprised at what Louisville's doing, is to play behind Pat Ewing. Don't give him any dunk shots and make him play as a normal pivot man. That's what we're seeing right now. Scooter playing behind him, making him make hook shots and jump shots and total maneuvers as a pivot man, not giving him the easy dunk. There was Jerry Eves battling for the rebound. Shows you some of the depth. How many teams can bring a Scooter McRae off the bench? Wagner. Wagner is fouled as he's moved inside. Nope, he's going to be called for the foul. Nope, Wagner. He'll learn to pull up and take that jump shot. One more dribble, and it got him in trouble as Ewing came over to help. Still 10 all. 10 22 to go, first half. Very low scoring. A lot of shots being taken, but a lot of them off balance, being pressured by the defense. It's hard to settle down in a half-court offense because the team's pressuring you so much. You believe we've played almost 10 minutes and we've had only 10 points each? 
Town is one for eight from the field. The last shots they've taken. That'll show you how difficult it's been. Now here's some nice half-court movement for the first time in a while by Georgetown. Getting back into their offense a little bit. Hancock at six foot seven. He's out of the D.C. area. Good move by Freddie Brown right here. Getting his team into some concept of an offense. Sleepy Floyd getting ready to check back in for Georgetown at the 940 mark. Off to Eric Smith. Good defense by Louisville. Their quickness. Anthony Jones. He's the man we talked about. Tipped out by Jones. And Anthony Jones has it. Ewing was ready for the lob. Jones couldn't get his hands on the ball. Right now, Georgetown running it efficiently. Hancock almost traveled. Charlie Jones giving him fits. He's in the lane. Three seconds. Nice defense by Charlie Jones. I said this would be a war. <laughs> you just do not get off an easy shot. Now, as we mentioned, Wagner had that virus, having all the skin off the palms of his hand. We understand he's in quite a bit of pain with that also. He's hit one basket in this game. It's still tied up, 10-all, 9-20, first half. History is being made today in the Superdome. A record crowd of over 61,000. Billy, a little different perspective up there from where we are at Courtside, but it's been some festive occasion. It was interesting. I talked to Eddie Fogler, an assistant coach with North Carolina, in between games, and he said, you know, although there are a lot of people here, it feels like on the floor that you're playing in front of five or 6,000 people, and the kids never adjusted to it very well in the first game, was his opinion. Georgetown to the ball, 10-10, the score. Floyd. Anthony Jones off to Spriggs. Floyd back in the game now, trying to set him up, getting him free for a jump. And look at Eve, stay close to him. That's quite a matchup, 6-4 against 6-3. Smith backing out, nine minutes to go in this first half of play. Georgetown shooting 31%, Louisville just a little over 28. Isn't that unbelievable? And both these teams are shooting 60% or better in tournament play. Not against this kind of defense, they weren't shooting 60%. Oh, they went right through Pat Ewing. Pat oh. Ewing normally plays with his hands above his head. He's a little tired right now, and his hands got caught trying to lift them quickly. Still, it's 10-all. There's an end zone, high angle shot at the 838 mark. Look at how tough it is to get that ball over half court and almost impossible to attack on the other end because of Ewing's presence under the basket. 15 turnovers in this game. Eight of them have been assessed against Georgetown. Neither team has been able to figure out how to get off a shot. Now, here's that 1-3-1 with Pat Ewing playing as high as the foul line. Jones inside. And Sleepy Floyd did a heck of a job inside against him. Well, because Ewing is so far from the basket, they can work the baseline, but good help by Floyd. Eric Smith, I don't think he thought that was going in, but it did. And now Georgetown with a two-point lead. Eric Smith with four. Boy, you got to protect yourself from the ball in this game. Scooter McRae, baseline. Jones, it'll count, and he's fouled. Some kind of power move. And those, and those people are at the French Quarter. I would have told you, <laughs> the Oscar sales are up in New Orleans, right? I, you know, I was mentioning, Gary, about Eddie Fogler's comment. It's, it's the fact that there aren't people right next to you as there are in most gymnasiums. The crowd is away from the players, so they don't sense the presence of the 61,000. Substitution, Rodney McRae comes in, Poncho Wright leaves. This is Bill Martin, another one of the fine young freshmen. Three of the top ten high school players in the country recruited this past year by John Thompson. And one of them is Martin, who just came in. Jones, you can hear him yell, short. He misses the opportunity for a three-point play. And against UAB, he would drill in all of those foul shots. 12-12, our score. Sleepy Floyd, off to Ewing. You see Ewing with a T-shirt on. He wears that because he has a tendency to catch colds. Here's Lancaster Gordon. Backing it out. Scooter McRae, who's not been shooting well this year, about 37%. Sleepy Floyd off to Eric Smith. And Smith now has scored two in a row for Georgetown. Big turnover for Louisville that time. They were on the attack, had a chance to score. That was a four-point turnaround. 14-12, the Hoyas. 7-13 to go, first half. Look at that. Oh! By Scooter McRae. Eves can't get it to go, though. Here comes Floyd. Sleepy Floyd to Jones. By Floyd. He pulled up and really triggered that one. You see a little tap now by Eric Smith. Boy, are they after each other. And Georgetown doesn't let up with defensive pressure. To Anthony Jones, the freshman scores two back-to-back -back baskets. 
Biggest lead of the game, 18-12 in favor of Georgetown. You can see John Thompson standing up the towel over his shoulder. Andy McRae, you can hear the grunting and groaning. That'll count. Miles Jones again inside. And what's happening? So strong. A great move by Rodney McRae taking the ball right to Pat Ewing. You'll see him here. By doing that, you occupy Ewing, and you don't give him an opportunity to guard the whole lane. That gave Jones an opportunity for an offensive rebound similar to what we saw in the first game that Houston got so many of in the second half against Carolina. Now Fred Brown is going to come in. Eric Smith will sit down. Brown, Charles Jones, shooting New ball. York native, out of the Bronx. He was a teammate of Ed Pinckney, who plays for Villanova. Jones, four points. Again, another three-point play possibility. He's missed both of those. And Watt, traveling, will go against Jerry Eves. Jerry Eves slipped. The Louisville players, because they have such great leapers themselves and such depth on their team, they are not intimidated by leapers inside. You know, they play against it every day in practice. That's why a guy like Eves would put the ball right up in Ewing's face. Floyd and Jones to handle this full court pressure. Six and a half minutes to go, first half. 18-14. Georgetown has committed seven fouls, only two against Louisville and Floyd. Takes advantage of an opening. An excellent split by Sleepy Floyd going right through the double team. Sleepy Floyd. Outstanding but one of the MVP in the West region. Rodney McRae, what body control he had. They have to be one of the finest jumping teams you'll ever see, this Louisville team. That's been a trademark of Denny Crumb's clubs, uh, all of them that he's had to the final four. Did they get it across? They did not. Ten seconds. They did not break the mid-court line. Good defense by the Cardinals. Ten second violation. That's ten turnovers now against Georgetown. And all of the turnovers in this half have been created by defensive play, not by sloppy play. 19 of them totally now. 2016, this first half wheeling through in a hurry, 545. Louisville trying to get to the championship game for the second time in three years. Derek Smith. That was a set play. Rodney McCray set the screen for Derek Smith to get the jumper. He's high point man of the field now. Derek Smith with eight. 20, 18, that six point lead dissolved in a hurry. And there's your time remaining in the first half. Back to the tight man to man defense. And now it's Scooter McRae on Pat Ewing. You can see how Fred Brown controls the tempo in this club, doesn't he? Into Ewing, good catch, good block. Ewing still after it, and he walked to the ball. Rodney McRae at six foot seven is the guy that came up with the block. He was a member of our 1980 Olympic team. Very underrated ball player, and as we've said throughout the course of the year, may have the best hands in college basketball as far as snatching two-handed rebounds. He led the team in block shots, and he took on the big guy at that time, Pat Ewing. Ewing just a little bit out of control a couple of times, but you got to give credit to this Louisville defense. Five minutes. Look at the field goal percentage. Way below what these teams are used to see. 18, Louisville, the chance to tie this game up. There's a 1-3-1 defense now by Georgetown. Eric Smith, who in his career shot over 57%. That's a travel on Gordon. And now they have 10 turnovers. Both teams at double figures in the turnover department. A timeout, 444 left in this first half. Georgetown with a slim two-point lead. Last year, Indiana and coach Bobby Knight won the championship in Philadelphia. Brent will visit with him at halftime. And the NCAA All-Star Yearbook talks about that 63 title game between Cincinnati and Loyola. Remember, Cincinnati won two in a row, got to the championship. Well, we'll wait and let you see what happened. That's right. Nobody had ever won three in a row prior to that time. And, you know, Gary, on those, I'd like to thank the, the National Basketball Hall of Fame for helping us out with all that footage. Uh, that's a great place to visit, and they were very helpful in putting together those old films. I enjoyed Kurt Gowdy going back and reminiscing. Four minutes, 44 seconds to go in this first half. 2018, Georgetown by two. Georgetown has scored 10 points off of 10 Louisville turnovers. And they've hit five of their last field, five of their last six field goal attempts. Brown, make it six of seven now. Brown's a guard, but he has that ability to go all the way inside. 
He went up against some good shot blockers there. All the players that have come into this game for Georgetown have scored some points. Good balance. 4.20 to go, first half. Here's Wagner's come back in. I don't think there's ever been anybody play with gloves in the history of this game, has there? Uh -huh. Not that I know of. I haven't seen it before. There's Wagner again. He's now one of three from the field. Nice rebound. Ease, and Jerry Ease can really get hot in that position. Smart play by Derek Smith, realizing it's so difficult to put it back up inside. Two-point game. Here's Brown. He's really steadied this club down, hasn't he? What a pass. There are some athletes out there, and that's not a, probably the understatement of the year. Even though it's only 22-20, we've seen remarkable effort and quickness and jumping ability. Sleepy boy settling him down. He handles the ball well, plays good defense. Bill Martin, he loves to shoot him from the baseline. He's an automatic man from about 12 feet away, but he doesn't have that spot right now. Now, see, there's a little bit of a switch here. You've got Rodney McRae on ground outside. They're trying to clear out for him. Into Ewing, they reached around, and Patrick took it in. That's the line, number 33. 24, 20, Ewing now with four points in the game. Pat Ewing's limping coming down the court. He is. I did not see it, but he is limping now. I think he's shaking it off. Seems to be okay. Out to Derek Smith. Well, he's limping pretty heavily right now. We'll see if John Thompson's going to get somebody in there for him. God does not seem to be making any moves. No movement on the bench to substitute or get anything. Kid's got a lot of heart. Now he's, he's not, getting Spriggs yep, up. Spriggs yep. is up. Yeah, he's limping noticeably now. Out it comes to Wagner, to Eves. 2.42, you see the time. Derek Smith against Brown. Rebound, Bill Martin. Six foot seven, another freshman. Up it comes to Sleepy Floyd. Charge. Yep. And did you see Patrick Ewan running down the court? If he was limping, he didn't show on that one. He was the second man down floor. Went 90 feet. See if we can pick up the inside. injury. There's the offensive maneuver. Put that dribble on the floor. Went inside with the power move, came down, twisted the ankle a little bit. If you step on somebody's foot, he may have. He's, he, gonna, he's gonna sit right now, but I think after he showed what he could do in that 90 feet, that ankle's okay. Four-point lead for the Hoyas. Ewing may sit out the remainder of this first half with less than two and a half to go in it. Louisville has a chance right now with Ewing on out of there. You know the amazing thing, Billy, Louisville has only two fouls in this game. As hard as they're playing defensively and on the boards. Ease. Rebound. Eric Smith. Here's Brown. Brown is not a great outside shooter, but he's a good penetrator. Controls the tempo. This is a team that has a lot of specialization. And another foul on Floyd. Now, what happened there is Rodney McCray blocked the shot, but Derek Smith was waiting to draw the charge. So they double-teamed Floyd inside, and he not only didn't get the basket because it was blocked, he did draw the charge. And here's Ewing back in. A wise play by John Thompson. He didn't want the big guy out. Now, Floyd has three personal fouls. You might remember he got into foul trouble against Wyoming in the West region and played with four never did foul out of that ball game, but now he has to sit down with three. Remember the interesting thing happened when Sleepy Floyd was out of that game, and the technical foul was called on Sleepy Floyd, and we couldn't figure out what the deal was because they only shot one. The referees, because he didn't have his uniform on, thought he was on the court at the time, but he actually was on the bench, and it should have been a two-shot foul. I think Ewing's well. Did you see him get up on that one? Yeah, he's well. Less than two, almost thrown away. Martin saves it. Still a four-point lead for Georgetown. Louisville having trouble at the free throw line. Oh, Billy, they're two of six. Ewing saved it, but that was a nice play by Anthony Jones before. There is Jones. Derek Smith should have taken that out of bounds with him. Derek Smith ejected. Derek Smith saved, but to the long team. Two on one. Eve, Wagner, Eve, beautiful play. Two great teams out here. They're playing so hard against each other. Neither team intimidated by the other team's great ability inside. Two-point lead, Georgetown, a minute 15. Now, they might go for the last shot of this first half. They're spreading it out a little bit. They'd like that lob to Ewing. You can see him just holding his ground inside. Here he is. Scooter against him. Throwing it away. Brown trying to go to Ewing, and Ewing could not get to it. He was impatient a little bit. Patrick Ewing hadn't set himself. Let's look at it. 
You'll see. Now watch, Ewing's going to take his man away from the ball and then quickly spin back. Here he comes, but he didn't have his feet planted, and the pass was going as he was leaning the other way. Less than a minute to go, first half. Louisville can tie it up. Steal, but out of bounds. It's going to go back to Louisville. Excellent effort by Brown. Brown really playing well for the Hoyas. Sure, you're back in this game. The ball is gone. There's Denny Crumman. We can't say enough about this fellow, the pain that he's been enduring throughout this entire month of March with that kidney stone, not knowing any minute when it's going to move and really causing some more pain. 45 years old. He's already won 250 games. Quickest anybody's ever done that. Major college coaching. Chance to tie it up. Louisville. Rodney McRae to ease. You see the time left in the first half at halftime. Bobby Knight with Brent. With this zone defense, you have to be careful looking for the shot because if you take too much time, here's what's going to happen. George Johns comes out, changes the zone to the 1-3-1. We saw that happen in the first game. Wagner to ease. Now they're yelling, let's go. They've got to start getting into this play now. Smith. Wagner. You see the time. Ease. Ewing with the rebound, and Georgetown is going to have a two-point lead. They were looking for the sixth tie of this game. A low-scoring first half, but what a torrid first half it's been. A lot of turnovers, but a lot of that dude, an excellent defensive play. The Louisville trying to move to the final. CBS sports coverage of the 82 NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this from your local station. This is CBS. Born of tradition, nurtured by pride. Budweiser Light with a clean, distinctive taste. A light beer worthy of the king of beers. Bring out your best. Bring out your best. The best never comes easy. That's why there's nothing else like it. Mike and Terry are undercover cops who love danger, laughs, and each other. Join them in the comedy series Baker's Dozen, Wednesdays right after WKRP on TV 10. Welcome back to the Superdome in New Orleans. I'm Brent Musburger. Bobby Knight, the outstanding Indiana coach, now has joined me. And, of course, in the first game, North Carolina advanced into the finals by eliminating Houston 68-63. to Bobby and I are going to take a look at some of the action from that game, and we'll get his thoughts because, of course, a year ago, Indiana eliminated North Carolina for their championship. Jordan, their freshman, was able to... A two-point game at halftime. Georgetown with the advantage 24-22. Well, if you like high-scoring games, this is not your cup of tea, but is hit toward as far as intensity is concerned. Look at the field goal percentage, Billy. That is way, way off. Both these teams shooting 60% or better in NCAA tourney play. And both teams have held their opponents down under the 45 mark, so that's not unusual there, but now they're having to go against another club with that same talent. And I think Bobby made an excellent point there at halftime down turnovers or something they'd have to cut down on the second half because when you get this kind of defense you don't get that many chances one thing one guy we should point out that's struggling is Eric Sleepy Floyd he has three fouls he's committed three turnovers he's one of five from the field he's got to get something going for George well he really does and you know Gary we had fun uh, with a shot chart in the first game today when you saw what North Carolina was able to accomplish with their shooting in that second half particularly everything down inside and you can see today the war that's going on in this particular game most shots being taken down in the baseline area sleepy Floyd normally and the Georgetown club in the far west had a lot of great perimeter shooting they're not getting that today we should mention the circles indicate a hit shot the others are missed shots you can see in the paint there one two three four five six over here on Louisville, on the other hand, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven inside the paint. That's right, and uh, that's where we expected this game to be played down there. Neither team intimidated by the other club's presence inside. One thing, Ewing, while he's not scoring a lot, has seven rebounds in this first half. And probably has altered 10 to 12 shots. Well, if you're a coach, what do you say to these two ball clubs? It's so intense. 
How are you going to control it? Well, I think the key thing is to try to get into some semblance of a half-court offense, and there it was, Sprague stepping out of bounds, but that is so tough because the other team doesn't give you the opportunity. Now, Sprague's is starting the second half, along with Ewing, Eric Smith, Sleepy Floyd, and Fred Brown. So Sprague's in place of Hancock. As far as Louisville is concerned, they are coming back with a five that started the ball game. There's Derek Smith, Eves, Rodney McRae, Wiley Brown, and Lancaster Gordon. Wiley Brown inside, blocked by Sprague. He takes it over. Molly Brown gives the defense, but he has a hard time offensively. Brown, a nice pass to Floyd. That might get Floyd started. Only a second field goal of the game, four points. 26-22. Here's Georgetown now with a half, with a, about a three-quarter court zone press. Look at Spriggs at 6-9 hustling out there on defense. Good movement for that guy. He forgets he's all of 26 years of age. South Georgetown taking a page out of Louisville's book. A full court zone press and back to man to man. Look for Jerry Eves to try to draw a foul on Sleepy Floyd. Gordon, who was very quiet in that first half, really didn't get an opportunity to shoot all that much. He was 0 3 from the field. He changed his shot there. Rodney McRae and a foul. Now the foul is in on Brown on the inside. McRae really ripping one Look. off there. And Lancaster Gordon did a smart thing. He realized he was not going to get the shot over Ewing, Brown's so he threw it up on the board so one of his teammates Brown's could have a chance first. grabbing it rather than having it rejected. Boy, it's been a long time since Gordon has gone scoreless in a half. He did in that first half. Oh, nice hairdo the there. <laughs> I hope that's not a permanent hair. Well, New Orleans have been a great town for the Final Four. The people, I'm sure, are really enjoying themselves here. McRae. You see his two points, but he has three rebounds to go with that. Rodney McRae out of Mount Vernon, New York. The McRae brothers. His brother did not get to play on that title team. He tore up a knee that year, but he'd like to go to the title. Win it like his brother did two years ago. Well, the only guy on that club everybody knew about Daryl Griffith. The other great player was Tony Branch, who's now an assistant coach at Manhattan College. Fred Brown in trouble, and he's been fouled by Gordon. Almost a big steal by Gordon coming in behind Brown, but Brown handles that ball well. You know, in the first half, Georgetown didn't oh, shoot any free throws, and Louisville only shot six, hitting two of those. The turnovers with a big story in that first half. Look at that. That's interesting. 25 wins. There was a switch inside that time. Wiley Brown picking up for Rodney McRae. Sleepy Floyd still not shooting well. Derek Smith can't control the rebound. Spriggs is there, and he took him up, and he was fouled. A lot of red shirts up around the ball. Well, this double power post that John Thompson has in the ball game right now is really making their presence felt. I'm going to point out something here. There's John Thompson right now. He is the first black man ever to take a team to the Final Four as a coach. John says he sees no significance in that whatsoever, although I, you know, I, I kind of do. I think the game has changed a lot, and I think he deserves a, a lot of credit for what he's taken through. He said there have been a lot of other guys that had outstanding teams that just weren't lucky enough to get here. He's quite a, quite a young man. Ed Spriggs at the line, a very unselfish player. John Thompson was telling me Spriggs has a lot to do with Ewing's development. The fact that he went head-to-head -head with him in practice made him improve, intimidated him early. And I think he sacrificed his position knowing this freshman coming, was coming in. It would be less playing time for him, but he's adjusted well. Looking for his fifth point. And now a 27-24 game. 18-33 to go. The Gordon, look at Ewing. Now that pass looked like it was safely thrown, and here he comes out of nowhere. Now they of course, with the two big guys, they have Spriggs to make it difficult to rotate the ball in the backcourt and Ewing to be the defender in the end. Jerry Eves. Talked a lot about Darrell Griffith. He said, when we won the title in 80, we weren't really knowledgeable enough to be scared about where we are. Now we know how tough it is to win it, and we want it that much worse. Right now, Louisville trailing by three. Lancaster Gordon trying to post up Derek Floyd inside. Pat Ewing's aware of it, so he's shading over there with him. Ewing always ready to capitalize to make up for the mistakes. Rodney McRae, that was Ewing, but he committed the foul. Almost pulled it off. John Thompson loved it. Pat Ewing was on the deep wing. Ended up helping out all the way across the court. Watch him come across there. He saw a lot of contact there, was it? That's his second foul. 
player of the year in high school. This year he's been guardedly brought along by John Thompson and the dividend has paid off. Well, there were three great centers in high school level last year in the eyes of most recruiters. There's Denny Crump. Stuart Gray that went to UCLA. Greg Drawling at Wichita State and Pat Ewing. And even after last summer, some people said, well, Gray outplayed him up in Syracuse. But Ewing has been the man for this freshman year. 27, 26, a one-point game and a foul. He's got to have room to catch the ball, doesn't he? Exactly right. Some call. We saw that in the first game. You've got to give that man an opportunity to come down. Second foul on Rodney McRae. Third team foul on Louisville. Remember in that first half, Louisville shot only two free throws. Georgetown didn't even go to the line. Here you see it right here. Rodney McRae getting underneath Sleepy Floyd, not giving him a chance to come down in the normal position. Ahoy is with a one-point lead. Halftime, they led by two, 24-22. Floyd, look at the defense by Derek Smith. And he jumped out. See, Louisville has that ability to almost any guy on your team can guard a forward or a guard. No real mismatch situations. Floyd continues to be cold. Down deep is Derek Smith. He's just looking for him, but he's going to pop anyway. And now Louisville has taken the lead. Six points for Eves. 28-27 our score. Georgetown looking for some outside shooting from Sleepy Floyd right now. Here it is. He was one of five in the first half. He missed three in the second half, but he gets that one. And it goes back to Georgetown's advantage. Six points for Sleepy. That's why he's an All-American. Took the shot after having missed a couple. Look at the hustle by Eric Smith chasing Jerry Eves. The intensity Billy hasn't backed off at all since that first half. Here's Fred Brown, comes out of there with it. Spriggs brings it out to Eric Smith. Both Gordon and Eves are back. 11 turnover against Ray Bailey. Pulled up short on that one. Floyd to follow. Intimidated a little bit that time by Rodney McRae. Sleepy Floyd had the hitch on the jump shot. He was almost exhausted when he tried to put that up. Rodney McRae, Derek Smith. Got Ewing on Smith. Now Ewing gets the switch and goes back to McRae. 16 and a half to go. Wiley Brown is not an offensive threat, but he's been getting a lot of minutes of play here. I think we'll very soon see Charlie Jones get back in that game for Denny Crump. Does a good job of drawing the fouls, getting a basket, a rebound here and there. He dropped about 30 pounds from a year ago and he didn't get to play. Good ball movement. Eves, there's Wiley. Oh, we just been talking about him. I think he saw the basket. He had two hands up in front of him. Louisville with a one-point lead. Floyd, he's going to continue to shoot. He's fouled. Foul will go on Derek Smith. Now, a lot of people say, hey, you're not hitting. Why do you keep shooting? Because the good shooters always believe that next one's going in. Well, he wasn't hitting early, but he's really into the flow of the offense right now. And it's really difficult to shoot when you're being well defensed and also getting a little tired. Mike Hancock is checking in. Spriggs will check out. So John Thompson's change with Spriggs starting the second half. Giving Hancock a chance to get now into the flow of the game at the 15-47 mark. Floyd this year shooting 71% from the line. Six points. But he's only three of 11 from the field in this game. Louisville has not gone to the bench yet in the second half. 31-30 to Eves. Jerry Eves, that wrap thigh. He has a slight pull in the muscle. He's out of Ballard High School in Louisville. He seemingly always had somebody, a native of Louisville. Darrell Griffith, of course, was in that category. Wes Unsel, not a bad player. Brown, he's going to try another one. He got some confidence. Eric Smith. Brown reaches in, comes up with it. A foul on Eric Smith. I think Smith thought he was fouled to start with. Well, that might have been a good foul for Eric Smith in this respect. It would have been an easy shot inside for Louisville. John Thompson up off that bench. He has not been able to get to these officials today. A lot of people feel that his size and presence out there intimidates officials sometimes. But these guys have worked some kind of game today. Out to Gordon. Well, John Thompson and Bill Russell used to play against each other in practice. You see some traits from both of those guys. The good ones where they intimidate you a little bit. And you were talking about intimidation. Russell could do it. And so can John Thompson. 
Wiley Brown, and a foul inside. Can't say enough about the ability to catch a basketball. That time, Rodney McRae was receiving a bullet pass right in traffic and still kept his hands on it. You've said that so many times. He catches the ball well. Second foul on Brown. Now watch this. This ball came right through traffic. Look at those hands and concentration. I mean, that tough ball to catch. Back to the live action and another foul. This one going on Jerry Ease if they tried to inbounds the ball. Georgetown will have it. Georgetown with a one-point lead, 31-30. Timeout, 15 minutes left in this game. Gross weight at liftoff, 4.5 million pounds. Twin rocket boosters, 150 feet long. Fuel capacity, 1.5 million pounds. And helping support the launch of this behemoth, four Honeywell computers. Honeywell computers working together in a giant network are helping the Space Shuttle Columbia reach for the future. Honeywell, you should see what we do with computers. Now for small businesses, the Horizon Communication System from Bell. Select the features you need. Design a Horizon system to make your business more efficient, productive, profitable. As your needs change, you can reprogram the electronic Horizon system yourself. Today, no business is too small to need the knowledge business. The Horizon system. Information management from the Bell system. Statistician pointed out that Georgetown has taken six shots in the second half, all of them by Sleepy Floyd. He's hit two of the six. Right now, the Hoyas with a one-point lead. That shows you the depth of this Louisville team, but they're not getting that much production, but it's a low-scoring game. You know, you don't want to reflect back to the team that played in the first game, but you know in the entire NCAA playoffs, North Carolina's had six points off their bench. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? It really is. 31-30. Just inside, 15 minutes left. The winner to meet North Carolina Monday night. Brown in oh. trouble. Got it to Ewing somehow. And Ewing takes over. That was an incredible play by Ewing. Brown gave him a tough ball to handle. I don't know how Brown got out of that without committing a foul. 33-30. The Hoyas. Wiley Brown. Eric Smith. Look at the hustle this time. Great hustle by Brown. Boy, he's done the job now on both ends of the floor. Boy, three of 11 from the field. Kicks it back to Brown. This is the best I've seen Fred Brown play. Well, he is a very good handler of the ball. He can set up the team very well. You see Charles Jones ready to come in. Ewing, and he did not get it. Steal. Eric Smith, great second effort that time by Georgetown, and they now have a five-point lead. Riley Brown almost walked to the ball. Benny Crum may want a timeout to make this substitution right here. Eric Smith hits the deck, no whistle. Again, the officials still be doing an excellent job. They really are. It's a tough game to work, too. I think they're as tired as some of the players sometimes, the way it's been going. He's a sleepy Floyd on him. Louisville has not made a change in the second half. Derek Smith way overshot. Louisville losing a little bit on their offense. They've gone with these five guys. They may be tiring out a little bit. Poncho Wright is going to be coming in for Louisville. Denny Crum making a move to his bench. Here's Ewing again. Look at that pass. Out to Brown. You don't expect that somehow. I have a big guy. He rifled one out. He wants the ball, too. But he's having a tough time with Rodney McRae. They are posting up. Eric Smith. Very easy the rebound. Lancaster Gordon Brown. He battled away. What a play by Fred Brown. I, Fred Brown only chance was to reach on in, and I think uh, Lancaster Gordon faked himself out on that move. Now we have two substitutions. Poncho Wright and Charles Jones coming in for Louisville. There's McCray. Ewing's got him right there on his back. I think that's where Louisville wants it, making Ewing be a real pivot man. And there's the rebound by Eves. That is a war inside. Still a five-point lead for Georgetown. Back to the zone goes Georgetown. Good there's finish. Jones who just checked in and scored. Really, he has such strength. He can block his shot, intimidate it a little bit, but he still gets it in. I think it's a better scoring lineup in the game right now for Louisville. Jones with six points in the game. Hancock backing out of there to Brown. Look at Rodney McCray come out after him. 
Made him back out, didn't he? Jones going for the steal. That's off of Jones. Good overplay. I think your point is well taken. Very few teams can have six, seven, six, eight guys come out and pick up the guards like they do. That's right. They can play guard forward in McCray's place. He can play a guard forward, and right now he's playing Ewing at center. Ewing's really got the size on him. He wants the lob on the reverse. Rodney McCray anticipated, though. That's a set play. Ewing had it set up and well handled by Rodney McCray. Give Danny Crumb some credit for that. He looked at that a few times, anticipated it, and were able to short circuit the play. Ewing's playing smart inside. Yeah, and almost stepped out of bounds. He's playing smart inside. He's got it. They're not getting the ball. Oh, four, but it was a second late. And Jones comes up with a steal. They were just a trigger late on that, a hair late. 35-32, a chance now to cut it to one. 15 turnovers against Georgetown. Steal attempt by Hancock. Rodney McCray. And McCray is playing so well defensively, counters at the other end. A one-point game. Kids are showing some guts, aren't they? So steam. Six of McCray's eight points have come in the second half. He almost picks up a foul there. Red Brown. Into Eric Smith. Oh, what a play that was by Eric Smith. See Ewing wisely not putting the ball down through the, the basket since it is on that rim. Boy, that was a tough play. Ten points now for Eric Smith. There's Sleepy Floyd, and that'll be four on him. Floyd has four personal fouls at the 11.03 mark. He hasn't given up defensively as far as being aggressive, but he's going to have to sit right now. It's so reminiscent of that Wyoming game. Here we go. Ewing setting up a pick, trying to get Floyd clear. Then he goes and gets position. He's got McRae pinned on the inside, looking for the lob back. And McRae was smart enough to anticipate where the ball was coming from and getting away. Floyd sits down with eight points, four fouls, and four rebounds. Only three of 11 for the field in the first game. Rob Williams did not score for Houston. Floyd not having the offensive output in this game, you might anticipate. But his teammates still with the three-point lead. Ease. Charlie Jones broke it up nicely. I don't know how Spriggs got that away from him. That was Brown again, sticking his hands in there. Charlie Jones doing a good job on the weak side rebounding. There's your time left, 10 and a half minutes to go. The winner, the play for the championship Monday night against North Carolina. Now it's Scooter McRae on Ewing inside. Brown to Spriggs. Spriggs, a real leader on this ball club. We call him Pops, because he is much older than the rest of the players. Here is Eric Smith. What a play by this guy. That's two baskets in a row. 39-34, Eric Smith with 12 points. Third team, all Big East selection. He's high point man in this ball game. Ten minutes to go in it. Georgetown now getting a little working margin out there, and they're back in their zone, back in a little bit. Joe Wright to Jones Wright, their instant offense guy. He'll come off the bench, their best outside shooter. He really hasn't had the shot yet. Now the clock starts to work against Louisville a little bit. Against this zone, there's nothing inside, and they don't want to put up a bad outside shot. Anthony Jones has checked into the ballgame. Look at the defense he's playing on Jones. It's Jones against Jones. Lancaster Gordon, he is not having the kind of day he usually has. Fred Brown in trouble. They're going to have to get it across, and they do. Brown just good second ever, but a reach in by Gordon. Brown still has a point. He, he has some quick hands, and John Thompson won the foul on that sideline. He is working the official now. Fred Brown is doing a little bit of everything in this ball game. Some of it's not going to show up in that box score. Georgetown will inbounds. As you can tell, they're getting a little bit tired now. And there is a timeout with 9.06 to go. Milt Wagner will check in for Louisville. Right now, let's take a break from the action. Well, with only nine minutes left in a game, you would figure that somebody would have more than 12 points in this game, but that shows you how tough it's been. Smith, the high point man, and McCray and Derek Smith with eight each for Louisville. The interesting thing in this game, as far as scoring is concerned, 
Lancaster Gordon has not scored. He is 0 for 5 from the field. And of course, Floyd is 3 of 11. So two excellent outside shooting guards for the opposing teams not finding the mark in this game. Well, Lancaster Gordon is going to sit down right now. So is Derek Smith. So it's the young freshman Note Wagner in the ball game again. Gloves and all. Ewing brings it back out to Brown. Brown has only two points, but that does not show the contribution he's made to this team. Eric Smith has made two excellent baskets down the last three or four minutes. Anthony Jones. Rebound Jones. Charles Jones out of Scuba, Mississippi. Nice pass to Poncho White. Some oh my my Brown. Brown. Brown blocked it. How did he do it? Some kind of play by Freddie Brown. He's done everything in this game, Billy. Eight and a half minutes left. Eric Smith to Jones. Ewing is getting position and it's now up to Georgetown. Just calm down enough to getting the ball. And Poncho Wright was getting him up defensively. He's only 6-5. Another turnover, 16 against Georgetown. It's an important basket right here for Louisville. They have not been able to get up a good shot against the zone that's packed back here recently. Louisville has won 11 of their last 12. Eight of their losses this year coming to teams ranked in the top 20. They may have had the toughest schedule of anybody in the country. Is up there. A steal by Spriggs. 16 turnovers against the Cardinals. That's a little mental exhaustion on the part of Jerry Eves. That play just wasn't there. Can't understand why that would occur. <laughs> I look for Georgetown trying to get it inside to Ewing. Here's Fred Brown. He's on him. There's Ewing. He was open again, but they don't seem to be getting the ball to him on time. He's giving credit to Louisville. He's showing good patience, though. He's not getting frustrated inside. Here he comes, cross oh, the lane. Boy, he went through like a halfback that time, hitting a hole as they collapsed on him. It's a smart move by Georgetown here. They're taking their time. Going to get up something that's decent. Sleepy Floyd standing up on the bench. See him there on the sideline. Inside, block. Anthony Jones has it. They reload again. Ewing. And a foul. Foul was going to go on Scooter McRae. Eric Smith had inside position. Ewing finally got it where he wanted. Took the turnaround jumper working against his body there. That's an awful hard shot to make. With everybody battling up on the boards, and there you can see Scooter McRae knocking a man to the floor. First foul on Scooter, sixth team foul against Louisville. Coming in now, Rodney McRae replacing his brother Scooter. Now you have Jones, who's probably going to be matched up against Ewing with this particular lineup, but this is a pretty good offensive scoring club on the floor for Louisville. There's Floyd with four fouls coming in. We haven't had a field goal now for the last three minutes and 15 seconds. Here is Sleepy. Three of the 11 from the field. Eight points in the ball game. Ewing comes out. Brown, I'm starting to become very important in this game. Derek Smith commits a foul on Eric Smith, and that will put them in the bonus. That's the seventh team foul against Louisville. And there are five team fouls on Georgetown, which will be significant because they're back there in the zone. There's a little pressure. John Thompson wiping his brow. I was, Providence. I was with John Thompson's high school coach last Lord Monday, a fellow by the name of Bob Dwyer, that went over, had over 700 victories in high school coaching. He had John, he had uh, Lutkowicz on that ball club, and he thought John would be an outstanding coach someday if he decided to pursue that profession. Well, you can really see the love that these players have for John Thompson. 13 points for Eric Smith. Advantage of 41-34. That's the biggest lead of the game. Seven points, the lead for Georgetown. Nice move by Georgetown here. They're not taking off that full court pressure. Keep it on him. Don't make any easy basket. Held Wagner off to Derek Smith. Louisville in serious trouble now because they're fighting the clock as well as the opponent. And this guy's fighting a shooting slump. Gordon 0 for 5. The veteran Smith. Oh, they needed that. And Georgetown now in excellent shape with 6.17 to go. Look for them maybe to sit on it a while. Ron Thompson is just sitting down over there wiping his brow. It's the first time Georgetown has been in the Final Four since 1943. Inside, six minutes left in the game. Floyd 
Boy, did you see Gordon almost pick his pocket there? They're starting to use the clock a little bit. And they have a foul, steal attempt. Rodney McRae breaking down the floor, but they'll bring it back. Poncho Wright comes in, going to give Derek Smith a breather. He missed that last shot. He may be a little bit tired. Rodney McRae with his third foul of the game. There's Poncho from Indianapolis. By the way, a as you look at Denny Crowder, Poncho's a very good friend of Landon Turner, a young man who played last year for Bobby Knight in Indiana who had that unfortunate auto accident. And he's kept in close contact with Landon all year long. At the line, you see what he's done today. He had seven of those rebounds in the first half. A one and one for Pat Ewing. He can add to the biggest lead of the game. He took his time. I was questioning there for a second if he wasn't going to take so much time, you know, uh, and, and, and have the shot taken away from him. Six of seven, Georgetown is from the line. And after missing their first, they've hit six in a row. That's pretty nice form, isn't it? Run hard, he stayed right with it. 42, make that 43, 34. McCray, pressure and time. Now starting him out on this Louisville team. Ancho Wright. It's a big basket for him. Ancho Wright picking up his first two points of the afternoon. 43, 36, you see the time left. And as you pointed out, Gary, Georgetown is in a one-on-one -on -one shooting situation. possession by the way if we the held ball will go to Georgetown Is Georgetown now trying to kill a little time 513 left it is total movement but this is an offensive weapon to use that clock up a little bit you see Spriggs coming out they're setting the double old post inside now you see inside five minutes left it's a tough team to try to kill time against as quick as Louisville is and there's the steal, but a foul, and McCray twice has almost come up with a steal, but twice has picked up the foul, and that's his fourth. Denny he doesn't Crump, agree with he's that He's upset at all. with that one. That had to be a touch. He might have grabbed his arm a little bit. John Thompson getting an interesting little timeout over here. There's no timeout called. He called all five of his players over to the sideline. Very wise move on his part. That was due to the delay of the ball going that's to the right. other end. That's right. Smart move by the coach. 40-year-old John Thompson, winning his coach in the history of Georgetown. Breaks two points, three rebounds. A couple of assists. Pretty good pickup. Not a good free throw there. That was not Fred Brown, as that graphic showed, but instead, that was Briggs at the line. Here is White batted out. There's Ewing again. And they're going to say it went off of him. Well, what happened, Ewing... Ewing was able to go ahead and, and distract Pancho Wright. Georgetown with a 43-36 lead. Four minutes, 43 seconds, and Denny Crum is hot. But that's a long time if you're a Georgetown fan. Well, it shows you the balance that Georgetown had to play against this year in the Big East. Clubs like Villanova and D.C. that did so well in the NCAAs and St. John's. There were no easy pickings there, and that's helped them, I'm sure, mature as a ball club a great deal. Down off to Sleepy Floyd. Floyd handling the pressure very well. They're coming out after him now. Off to Brown. Four and a half minutes to go. Louisville has scored only two points since the 11:37 mark, Billy. Ed Spriggs having a fine game. He does so many things that don't show, show up in the scorebook. Now, here's this little delay game right here. Be tough to take the ball away from Georgetown in this case. Georgetown has outscored Louisville 11 to 2 since that 11:37 mark. And they're doing a pretty good job of putting it in a deep freeze right now. The arrow is favoring Georgetown. The foul situation, Georgetown, and needless to say, the clock and the score also. Less than four minutes to go. Well, Wagner almost picking up the foul. Great effort by the freshman trying to stay with him, and now he commits the foul. The basket will not count. He was fouled before the move to the basket. And now Jerry Ease will check in 
Second foul on Milt Wagner. Pancho Wright will leave. Now free throw shooting going to be a key now for Georgetown because that's what Louisville is going to have to do to go ahead and get back in this ball game if they are. Floyd a 71% free throw shooter, which is kind of surprising, Gary. He's such a perfect type shooter and style shooter. You know he's got a lot of courage. You'd think he'd be up in the 80s. You know, the amazing thing about this guy is his durability, really. In four years, he's never missed a game at Georgetown. And in those four years, he has represented 38% of their offense. A consensus on the Gastonia native, and it looks like right now that two kids from Gastonia are going to be in the final four. Of course, you're talking about Worthy as well as Floyd. They went to the same church in Gastonia, but to different high schools. Jerry Eves, and Eves comes in and pops one in in a hurry. Three minutes, 29 seconds left. Still a seven-point lead for Georgetown. Eight points in the game for Eves. Reach in. Remember, the next hell ball again would go to Georgetown. And there was Spriggs again being the outlet pass man. Boy, what effort. And now Gordon will pick up the foul. Both, both of these clubs will be looking forward to a good night's rest. I'm talking and leading into the rest. John Thompson, when he played out in the West, stayed in Salt Lake and then went up to Logan, as we know, the first week and then up to Provo the second week to get here. And his club is not staying in New Orleans. In this case, they're in Biloxi, Mississippi. <laughs> We'll see some of the other spots in the country. But he just feels that it takes them out of all the hoopla that's going on in the city where the final four is at. Eleven points for Floyd. Now, what makes it so tough for Floyd is he's handling the ball. He's got to be a little bit winded, but he's been able to hit these free throws. He just hit those very calmly. He's six of six from the line, and it's 47-38. Here's Ed Spriggs playing the point on the zone press. The big guy is really putting out some effort. He kind of likes it, doesn't he? Look at him prancing around out there. After Rodney McRae, Louisville can't take a lot of time. Gordon finally breaks the scoring ice. His first field goal after missing five. Seven-point lead again for Georgetown. 2.50 left in the game. Georgetown wins this. Can you imagine Perkins against Ewing? <laughs> and here's another guy that's flexible, Eric Smith. You know, we talked about the Louisville kids that can play guard, forward, or center. Smith is the kind of guy defensively that's played Albert Kings. He's played Mark Aguirre's. He can play the guard defensively and the forward. Handles the ball well. A very versatile player. Wagner picking up his third foul at the 236 mark. Georgetown from the line has missed only two. They're 11 of 13. And Eric Smith at the line. You know, this guy may have a career in the National Football League. He was a quarterback in high school. And they feel he might be able to play. And look at the rebound by Spriggs. Big rebound. He now has seven rebounds in this game. He hasn't played all that much. Somebody's got to be open on the double team. But it's going to go to Georgetown. Right. Alternating hell ball, Georgetown will use it. See the arrow indicating the Hoyas will have possession with 2.23 left. Got a seven point lead. Now, what they want to do is just make sure they don't put up anything crazy. Force the fouls to be made. Floyd with Wagner. Wagner, great effort on his part the last five minutes defensively. You mentioned the gloves on Wagner's hand. He also has that same disease on his feet, so it's giving him a lot of trouble there, too. And he was in the hospital for a couple of days. Brown missed it, and Brown picks up the foul as he tried to double back up the floor. Hey, John Thompson going to talk to Freddie Brown right now. He said, come on over here. Let's talk that one over. And yeah, Freddie, you know, he really compounded the problem by missing that layup and then stopping the clock with a foul, but that's only the 16 foul. Right, one more, and they'll be shooting. McCray to inbounds it, 158 left in the game. A record crowd announced here, Billy, 61,612. That's even more than I think they thought they could get in here. Gordon to Jones, blocked, but a foul, no, goaltending on Ewing and Ewing. But I, I would imagine Ewing very upset with that, and I think the reaction is on the basis that that Jones was going to dunk the ball so that when he released it, it was on its way down. Let's see it. Oh, I think that's a good block. Yeah, I think you that's see a good the block. expression by Sleepy yeah, Floyd. Look, look at Patrick. He can't believe it either. Uh, good camera work there. And our director, Bob Fishman, on top of the reaction here. The pressure, John Thompson. <laughs> there you go. Is that a 
intimidating. Look at the difference in size there. I would say this, that if the score was 43-42, we'd see a little different reaction. But it is still five points. There's a lot of time, 147 to go. It's a lot of time when you're playing Louisville with the quickness that they have. What a basketball tradition. Denny Crum, who played for John Wooden as a guard and was his chief assistant, bringing a team here for the fourth time into the Final Four. And he's going to have quite a ball club next year. He has some people coming in from the recruiting wars, as well as the fact that Lancaster Gordon will be back along with the McCrays and the Joneses. Well, they have the longest string of consecutive winning seasons in the United States at Louisville. So when you think about their basketball program, it never really has been down. Well, Georgetown doing something that North Carolina did in the game before this, and North Carolina did in the East Regional, and that is shoot well from the free throw line. Since they have really gone to the line down the stretch, they've hit 8 of 10. That's, uh, that's the kind of basketball you got to have. Well, it really is, and particularly when they're only shooting 64% on the year as a team. That's what makes you the NCAA champion. You're Another nice mixture. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to have a little yeah. conversation on that call. Let's learn from John. You know what's nice about this Georgetown team is the blend, the mixture of a freshman like Ewing, a senior like Floyd, a freshman like Jones, a senior like Smith. Right. A lot of people have asked about that uh, T-shirt that Matt Ewing wears. It's because he has a tendency to catch cold in the wintertime. And he likes to keep the T-shirt on so that he doesn't get that chill. Nobody's going to argue with him either. 47-42. A minute 40 left in the game. A steal by McCray. Finally gets one. After having fouls on two previous ones. And that then a charge, charge or a block? It. Charge or a block? This is a big, big call here. It's going to go against McCray, I believe. If it is, that's five fouls on him. He is fouled out of the ball game. He could not pull up quick enough. Here comes McCray, putting it on the floor with the left hand, showing how versatile he is. Going to go up in the air right here. Good call. Good Boy, call. that's frustrating Louis, to him though, after that big steal and then fouling out. He'll leave the ball game with eight points and four rebounds. Here comes McCray through. Good anticipation, putting that ball, as I said, in his left hand. Comes on through here. Who is that? Freddie Brown again. Has he played some kind of game? And none of it's going to show up in the box score. That's right. Eric Smith. You know, what's very interesting to me is that play right there may have just shut the lid on this whole thing. That's a big turnaround. You lose McCray and you lose the basket, but however, they may have left the door open missing that free throw. Got to start putting the ball up quickly now. They had been 8 of 10 before that miss from the line. Take Hard too much. To ease. A minute 20, you see the time. Ewing with the steal. Too much time to put the ball up. 18 turnovers against Louisville. At the other end, it's Gordon. Lancaster Gordon. And I'm going to have a foul on Georgetown. Brown will be guilty. Now, Lancaster Gordon really did take a knee right in his shin. Let's see if he's going to be able to stay out there. That was Freddie Brown that reached out with the knee. Well, you can really get hurt on this play. Watch this one right here. Freddie Brown's knee going to hit him right down in the leg. Here it comes, right there. Right in the thigh, right above the knee. There you have shooting situation coming up. That was 17 foul, the fourth foul on Fred Brown, and there's the man you're talking about, Gordon. It was hurt. Denny Crum has the right now to put in any shooter that he wants to if he decides to take... Lancaster Gordon out of the ball game. But he's one of his better free throw shooters. He's shooting 75% from the line. Let's see what he's going to do. See if he's going to put Poncho in there. 108 left in the game. 47-42. Georgetown with the lead. Danny Crumb still with a shot at this one to try to move into the championship final. He's got Poncho right on the bench. And he's going to bring him in. in now, Poncho, as far as his statistics, what is it, 74, just about what Gordon has. Poncho will come in and shoot the free throw as Gordon goes out. He has two points in the game. We're going to have a timeout. Georgetown's going to make him think about it. They ask for a timeout with 108. So Poncho right at the line. You 
thought maybe that McCray play would be the final fitting blow as far as Georgetown is concerned, but then they let him off the hook when they missed the free throw at the other end. Well, free throws, of course, are a big thing down, at, down the wire, and I think Louisville's done a great job here not allowing Georgetown to occupy that clock. They, they had the nice working margin. Georgetown was in perfect position foul-wise, but Louisville just would not let up. Louisville has a let up all year. Billy, you might recall they were 12 and 8 at one time. They'd lost four in a row. Everyone thought, boy, they're not going to make it to the tournament. They were playing that tough schedule where they were playing Saturday, Sunday games. They found themselves really wondering if they even win 20 games. And after finally doing that, they had their 12th straight 20 victory season under Denny Crum. Well, Denny Crum feels that his club should be tested throughout the year. He figures if they are, they'll be in better prepared to play in the NCAA tournament. And one of the things, though, I think he realized this year was you don't have to put them under the undue pressure of playing in, let's say, a tough conference game on the road on a Saturday and coming right back for a big intersectional match on national TV on Sunday. So I think you'll see him spread them out a little bit more in the future schedule-wise. Speaking of sweating it out, that's what Poncho Wright is doing as he goes to the line. Highly sought after player from Indianapolis. According to Denny Crum, he might be the best athlete on the team. Per minutes played, he is their best rebounder. It's tough to come in there completely cold and make those kind of free throws. They're He's, still in the ball game. They really are. 47, 43, a minute eight. Remember, Sleepy Floyd has four fouls on him. Both teams in the one and one. Boy, he did a job, didn't he? 47, 44, a minute six. Floyd, he needs help. He calls a timeout, and very wisely, he was in trouble. They have three timeouts left. A heads-up play by the senior from Gastonia, as John Thompson now have a chance to map strategy, diagram a play to get the ball up the floor. Now, the arrow is pointing now in favor of Louisville. An interesting note, you cannot have a five-second held ball count in the backcourt. A lot of people don't realize that. So if Sleepy, rather than calling the timeout, Sleepy could have just held that ball for, for that period of time. But you can't have the five-second jump ball back there, okay? And instead, he wisely called the timeout so that his ball club could retain possession of that ball. John Thompson, in 1980, his team lost by one point to Iowa in the East Regional Final. Last year, they were beaten in the first round by James Madison. This year, they were called the beast of the East. It was the best in the West. I mean, they just decimated the competition out of that West region. Danny Crumb, some people were surprised that they got one of the buys. I mean, the committee knew what they were doing, didn't they? Well, they really did. The committee deserves a tremendous amount of credit for the way that they have put together this field. And, you know, every year you watch it, you say, oh, there's so many upsets. Uh, and yet, look at the quality that eventually gets to the Final Four. You can't wish your way here. You've got to be some kind of club. Louisville was wishing one other thing on their way to this tournament. That was that they would meet Kentucky. That didn't exactly work out. But they're here and now still alive with 103. Still Louisville, the arrow pointing in their favor. And I hope I made that clear in regard to you can't have the five-second hell ball in the backcourt. But you can't have a 10-second call. So he had to call the timeout. Remember, they have three timeouts left. Eric Smith, and they got a hurry. They just made it to Fred Brown. Again, the next hell ball would go to Louisville. 48 seconds. They've got a foul. And they do. Wright fouls Fred Brown. Now, that is a pretty good foul because Brown is shooting only 63% from the line. That was one of the guys that if you were going to foul, I guess that would be your choice. Well, what Denny's mad about right there is he told his club, if you don't steal the ball, don't wait to commit the foul. They lost themselves about 20 seconds on the clock by allowing Georgetown to get over half court. 44 seconds left. Brown needs to have these free throws for John Thompson. He's all for one from the line, and he hit it. Big, big free throw. Now John Thompson's up. Tell anybody to get their hands up to lay off of him. Uh, he wants to make sure his club gets back and does not commit a foul because he doesn't want the clock stopped. And Brown hits both of them. That what a job by Fred Brown in this game. He's done it all. That should be all they wrote right there. Just a little phony pressure. Back 
into the zone. 49, 44 at the time. You see what's left. Contra right there. Rainbow jumper. Speaky Floyd with the rebound. Georgetown, 29 seconds away from the championship final against North Carolina. They're trying to foul Brown. They don't get it. Ewing to Brown. And he threw it away. Derek Smith. John Thompson really upset about that turnover. Derek Smith hits it. And a timeout called by Louisville with 13 seconds to go. It isn't over yet. These two teams have really battled. This is, this is one of the real struggles I've seen in NCAA play. We knew it was going to be a war, and it's turned out to be everything we expected. You know, they used to play the semifinal and the final one day after the next. How would you like to be one of these teams and have to play tomorrow against North Carolina with the effort they put forth today? That's right. Be a very difficult assignment. But one of the things probably would favor Georgetown in a situation like that is their depth. The depth of both these clubs, and it'll be an interesting thing because North Carolina does not go to their bench as much. But as you said earlier, the way that starting five goes, the way they play, can you imagine the war we'll have if it does continue this way? Perkins going against Ewing inside and of course I think one of the other interesting matchups is going to be that guard situation how Eric Smith and Sleepy Floyd against Black and Jordan of North Carolina but that might be premature let's wait here we got 13 David, seconds got 13 seconds to go Louisville with one big uh, advantage in the fact that they do have the arrow pointing their way three timeouts left for both teams I think we'll see Louisville in this particular case the minute that it touches a Georgetown player's hands if if they can't go for the steal, go for the foul, and Denny Crum would like to make sure that no more than two seconds tick off before he sends a man to the foul line. Who would they foul? You think they'd go after Brown again? You can't, you can't, at this case, Gary, you can't go ahead and say who you're going to pick out the foul. You've got to foul the first man that touches that ball because uh, too much clock goes off if you're waiting for a particular person. There's the time, 49-46 Georgetown, and they foul this time Eric Smith. Eric Smith reaching in on Eric Smith. Had a chance for Spriggs right there. Let it get away from them. Spriggs, though, is a 70% shooter. John Thompson knew what he wanted to do by getting the ball. Danny Crum, what a year. Said two seconds. It was 13. Now it's 11. He got what he wanted. That's the third foul on Derek Smith. As far as John Thompson is concerned, that was a very long two seconds, I'm sure. And you know what John Thompson is going to do with his defensive club. He'll put the full court press on, even though it won't be that aggressive. Just to force Louisville to take some time getting it up court. Smith shooting 67% from the stripe. Georgetown has not scored a field goal since the 10-15 mark. They've scored all their points from the free throw line. And Louisville has asked for a timeout. They want Eric Smith to concentrate and think a little bit about a pressure free throw. Fred Brown delivered a while ago, hitting two. And now on the shoulders of Eric Smith. They have said about Eric Smith, though, Billy, when he gets down the stretch, the very end, he is the guy who wants the basketball and has come up with so many big plays when it's close. Now he's got a chance to do it again. Gary, we pointed out uh, at halftime with Brent that this is not only the scene of the Final Four, but it is also the scene of the National a lot of work takes place right here in regard to formulating what's going to happen in college basketball in the future. I'll throw out one shocking vote they had today. Everybody's been talking about the shot clock, or yesterday rather, the vote took place. Out of 392 coaches, one voted for the 24-second shot clock. 391 against. That really surprises me because there's been an awful lot of rhetoric about it, about the fact that the scoring's down, that we've had games where people would sit on the ball what, what changed all that you think sometimes maybe the coaches uh, uh, are trying to please the media a little bit by saying boy i'm in favor of that shot clock now the vote comes out 391 to one i'd like to know who the one guy was well, i thought you were going to tell me i don't know i don't know <laughs> interesting. now the hoyas are starting to celebrate what is a hoya billy you told me this before what is a hoya that hoya means what in greek but it's uh symbolizes a rock, something powerful on campus. Huh? Say that Wake Forest education comes through all the time, doesn't it? Well, I took three years of Spanish. <laughs> don't even know how to order a hot dog. Our Can't producer, Rick Sharp, doesn't Greek. even understand your explanation. You want to try again? All right. Eric Smith, 14 points. Two of three from the free throw line. They miss it. And it's 
bounce off of Derek Smith. Georgetown has the ball. Ed Sprague somehow initiated that and kept the ball in play until Smith could bat it out of bounds. Derek just misjudged it a little bit. There's Denny Crum. Not much with his staff. Not much he can do about it now. Nine seconds to go. What an effort by Louisville. Out it comes to Floyd. They got a foul him. Derek Smith has. A pretty good foul on that. That should be a two-shot foul. And Eric indicating, well, I should say sleepy four, indicating three, that's what it is. Five seconds. That's four fouls on Derek Smith. So Louisville, who went to the championship in 1980, not going to be able to return in 1982. Well, Denny Crum has his head bowed down, but none of the kids on this club have to feel bad in regard to the effort and performance they put on today. Look at there's his staff. That's seven free throws in a row that Sleepy Floyd has hit. So he has 13 points, and after that first half, when he was only one of five for two points, he's come back in the second half, hasn't he? Playing with four fouls, too. 50-46, and it's all over. And it's going to be a Georgetown, North Carolina championship final. The Ewings against this outstanding Sam Perkins, James Worthy combination. It should be a fitting climax to this 1982 season. As Georgetown now has won 10 in a row. They've won their 30th game of the year against only six losses. They've won 16 of their last 17. to the Wyoming Cowboys, but they'll have a chance to do something about that Monday night. Of course, we'll be here to bring you all the action. North Carolina and Georgetown, the top seeds from the respective regions of the East and the West will now meet here in the South to determine who in fact will be the NCAA champion in 1982. Congratulations to John Thompson. Congratulations to Pat Ewing. Georgetown continues their march. Dean Smith trying to win his first NCAA championship ever as a tough obstacle ahead of him in this Georgetown team. We'll be back with interviews and sidelights in just a moment.